Okay, I got it. At Montana State University, they look for another promising bone to sacrifice. Just set it down right here. I just feel really bad that it took a long time and a lot of work to put this thing together. I mean, you can see all the cracks and stuff in it, but now we get to break it apart. It doesn't matter how well it preserved it is or how nice it looks. We are going to go inside. This is the spot. That spot looks good. Their instrument of choice, a hammer and chisel. And we're just going to pull it apart. Yep. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Okay, here it comes. After treatment, these two seem to contain soft tissue. But she still needs to prove it. So she turns to a powerful electron microscope. And now, at 4,000 times magnification, she sees tiny structures preserved in such detail that they are unlikely to be mineralized fossil. They appear to be microscopic cells that build dinosaur bones. This is an osteocyte. This is a bone-forming cell from a dinosaur. Osteocytes are really distinctive because they have these little cellular extensions that they call philopodia, which means little feet. Schweitzer's bone seems to preserve soft tissue. It should tell us more about the biology of these ancient beasts, and it may even contain dinosaur DNA. At this point, I think pretty much anything is possible. But if it does, could we ever use it to recreate an ancient dinosaur? It's unlikely. We can only hope to recover minuscule fragments of gigantic DNA molecules. You know, even if you were to have some way of finding DNA and finding little pieces and, and hoping that every time you found a new little piece it was a piece you didn't have before, the chances of ever finding enough to make a dinosaur is is just virtually impossible, I think. So the Jurassic Park scenario will never work, at least with today's technology. But Horner sees a new method on the horizon that could create a living dinosaur in our lifetime. Jack Horner realizes we'll never recover enough ancient DNA to make a dinosaur. But now he sees powerful new tools, revolutionary advances in genetics that create a new possibility of making a dinosaur in the flesh. If we want to see a dinosaur in our lifetime, there, there is the possibility um, of starting with a bird and working backwards. Basically, retro-engineering a bird using its ancestral DNA and flipping the right switches, we could theoretically turn a bird into a dinosaur. Horner's strange case hinges on settling a long-standing controversy, the claim that dinosaurs have living descendants, birds. On the face of it, they don't look similar. Some scientists believe that although they evolved from a common ancestor, they're not directly related. But to Horner, the differences fade away on closer examination. In the 1990s, scientists began discovering many dinosaurs in China, buried in a fine ash that preserved unusual detail, such as retractable claws, teeth, and feathers, just like birds. But that's just the beginning. What characterizes a bird? People, you know, instantly say feathers. But, you know, we have dinosaurs that have feathers. So that is not a unique character to birds. They say hollow bones, but the theropod dinosaurs have hollow bones. Oblong eggs. Dinosaurs have oblong eggs. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. And virtually every characteristic that we think of as, as being unique to birds, dinosaurs invented. 
Most paleontologists now believe that ancient birds descended from the raptors, a class of theropods that includes the velociraptor. Hey, you guy, come here, come here. But to Horner and some of his colleagues, there is one surefire way to prove that birds evolved from dinosaurs by demonstrating that scientists can turn back the evolutionary clock and retro-engineer a dinosaur from a bird. It sounds far-fetched, but when you realize how many characteristics they share in common, it sounds pretty easy. And the startling advances that may make this possible? Horner and some of his colleagues believe that a modern bird's DNA contains a genetic memory. And most genes for dinosaur traits are still there. They are just turned off or slightly modified. The science behind this strange claim comes from a recent breakthrough in solving one of science's greatest mysteries. How a single cell grows into a complex organism, like a dinosaur or a human. Because our DNA is so huge, biologists always assume that roughly 100,000 genes must shape our body's development. But then scientists decoded our genome, the entire sequence of human DNA. Sean Carroll is a leading geneticist investigating this mystery. There are estimates that maybe humans might have, say, 100,000 genes relative to maybe other animals having 20,000 or 30,000 or something like that. And that was just vaporized. Despite our remarkable complexity, we only have about 20,000 genes. Roughly the same number as other mammals, reptiles, birds, and dinosaurs. In 1994, Carroll makes a new discovery that shows that closely related species like dinosaurs and birds have even more genes in common. He discovers that the butterfly reuses an ancient bodybuilding gene in a new way. In the caterpillar, the gene tells the body where to form antenna and legs. But as the caterpillar turns into a butterfly, the same gene tells the wing where to make spots. So keep your eye on the green spots. Voila. Each green spot is what's going to be the dead center, the white area of each of these eye spots. And that is the way a lot of evolution happens. It's by very old genes picking up new tricks. Carol believes we have found a solution to one of evolution's greatest mysteries, how new features arise. New species often emerge, not by evolving new genes, but by using old genes in new ways, by changing when and where their genes turn on and off. These breakthroughs mean that a bird's DNA is much more similar to the DNA of its dinosaur ancestors than we ever thought possible. Really, the inventory of genes in a bird would be very similar to the inventory of genes in a dinosaur. It's just the choreography of the use of those genes during development that has differed. So really, there's tremendous genetic continuity that connects birds to dinosaurs, but it's little differences in decision-making during development that makes the whole difference between, you know, a chicken and a tyrannosaurus. To Jack Horner, these breakthroughs lead to a stunning revelation. The bird genome is, is basically a dinosaur genome. So all we have to do is tweak it a little bit, and we should have a dinosaur. Suddenly, the challenge of recreating dinosaurs has become much easier.